Early in the morning in Dakar, Senegal, the research vessel Dr. Fridtjof Nansen set sail for a new survey. The ship is operated by Norway's Institute of Marine Research under the guidance of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. Her task is to gather and analyze data and samples to strengthen the knowledge base for implementing an ecosystem approach to the management of fisheries in Northwest Africa. Since 1975, this vessel and the one before of the same name have carried out surveys for a number of miles equal to about 60 times the distance around the globe. In the last decades, the depletion of marine fish stocks has been rampant, with a growing negative impact on the entire fisheries sector. The work on the ship is to help scientists understand the reasons for such depletion. On board the vessel, research is organised along line transects laid perpendicular to the coastline. The primary activity is close examination of the fish stocks, species, sizes, quantities, recording also properties of the seawater and mapping the sea floor. For the surveys, the Dr. Fridjof Nansen has modern, sophisticated equipment to work in all conditions, 24 hours a day. The essential focus is to measure changes taking place in the ocean. Knowledge, data and information to enable fisheries administrations take appropriate actions to halt the decline of fishery resources. The CTD, the Conductivity, Temperature and Depth Profiling Instrument, measures fluorescence, oxygen, salinity and temperature at various depths. Since 1993 it has been used nearly 22,000 times, an indication of the amount of data gathered for global understanding of the relationship between water conditions and fish population. This net is lowered into the sea to sample plankton, the major food for fish. It is used together with the CTD whilst the ship has come to a stop. The multi-net, on the other hand, is used to collect plankton samples at various depths while the vessel is moving. It also collects fish eggs and larvae, essential for identifying spawning and nursery areas. Benthos sledge is towed 
to collect sediment from the sea bottom. Sediment is full of living microorganisms and small mollusks. Raymond is a scientist from Guinea, who on this trip has the task to record what is found in the sediment. La faune aquatique comprend les êtres pélagiques, démersales et les êtres de fond. Donc euh, ces invertébrés ont une importance très très primordiale ici, parce que sans eux, on ne peut pas juger l'état de conservation de l'habitat. Donc c'est ça l'importance. Like the invertebrates, the fish caught in the net are sorted, weighed and measured. And the information recorded in NANSYS, the survey data management system of the EAF Nansen project. Fish don't respect boundaries. They go where the habitat and the food are suitable for them. So it is essential for the researchers to detect fish movements, work out the reasons, and try to predict possible trends. This is how On these surveys, sometimes new species are encountered. In 2007, for example, a new type of goatfish discovered in the waters of Mozambique was officially named Parapanus nansi. All scientists coming on board for the first time are given orientation and training on the Nansen survey routines, including data capture and analysis. And when the sophisticated equipment has done its job, it's time for personal scientific creativity. To improve knowledge, any method can be appropriate. In the last two years, over 2,000 scientists, technicians and trainees from all over Africa have taken part in the Nansen surveys. Many of them have participated more than once, but it is still a huge number. One of the overriding objectives of the project is to enhance the capacity of national scientists. Nous sommes ici à bord du navire de recherche de l'Institut Sénégalais de Recherche Agricole, le navire euh, Itafdem. Et à ce niveau, on doit se, euh, dire que le Fridge of Nansen a contribué largement, largement, disons, dans cette mesure, pour avoir, pour une bonne partie, disons, des, euh, des, des scientifiques de la région. Il est important de signaler, euh, particulièrement pour les ressources pélagiques, Il s'agit ici de ressources partagées, donc euh, qu'on ne peut pas gérer d'une manière individuelle, mais nécessairement au niveau régional. At the end of a research trip, scientists from the region meet to discuss the data and information collected during the survey. This is an important activity of the EAF Nansen project. Data are compared with others from different sources to enable the scientists to draw conclusions on the state of the resources and the marine environment. As a policy of the EAF Nansen project, individual countries own the data collected in their waters. In the post-survey working groups, information is shared to provide a complete picture of the fishery resources. This helps the development of appropriate national and regional policies to manage the fisheries. The ultimate goal of the surveys is to ensure sustainability of the marine resources to contribute to the improvement of human conditions. Les 
changement climatique dans l'écosystème du courant des Canaries, la tendance est à une augmentation de la température de mer. Les phénomènes qu'on a déjà observés, c'est qu'il y a une, euh, un mouvement des populations de certaines espèces. Il va de soi qu'avec euh, ce réchauffement climatique, il y a une baisse de la productivité euh, qui a une conséquence sur la disponibilité du poisson, notamment des poissons pélagiques côtiers, qui sont les poissons les plus accessibles aux populations et qui ont des conséquences euh, socio-économiques très néfastes pour les populations. Et euh, ça va générer une malnutrition et ça va faire aussi des pertes de revenus pour les pêcheurs. Actuellement, nous avons un écosystème du courant des Canaries qui est assez productif, qui procure des biens et des services qu'il s'agit de sauvegarder. Parce que nous avons affaire là à des ressources marines vivantes, mais renouvelables. Si on les gère correctement, on doit pouvoir en faire bénéficier les générations actuelles et les générations futures. En conséquence, l'aspect recherche, le suivi scientifique de ces ressources, est indispensable en dotant les instituts de recherche de moyens et de capacités pour pouvoir les évaluer et les suivre et donner des avis scientifiques en matière qui, sont, qui seraient à la source des mesures d'aménagement adoptées par les gouvernements. Overexploitation of the oceans occurs for a variety of reasons. The increasing number of vessels and fishermen, more efficient fishing gear and technology, trawlers catching too close to shore and destroying fish nursery grounds, and inadequate information available for fishermen. Fish can be a sustainable resource, both as food and as a reliable source of income for fishers, processors and traders. In Africa, like everywhere else in the world, millions of people live on fish and seafood, and the demand is growing year after year. If marine resources and their habitats are not properly managed, overexploitation could undermine food security and could lead to the loss of livelihoods for people like these working in this fish processing plant in Mauritania. Many developing countries are not fully equipped to sustainably manage their fisheries and monitor their territorial waters. The Nansen project is working to provide some of the vital data and information that would give countries the opportunity to take the right decisions and actions to prevent, stop or reverse the decline of the fishery resources. La première solution que l'État a envisagée pour régler le problème, c'est d'abord de suspendre les licences de pêche qui ont été octroyées aux pêcheries étrangères euh, industrielles. Une autre solution que l'État a envisagée depuis longtemps, c'est d'organiser les pêcheurs eux-mêmes en comités locaux selon leur localité, dans leur propre localité, en quelque sorte que ces pêcheurs se prennent en charge et sachent que euh, la pérennité de la ressource dépendra de la gestion dont ils en font. The end of the day does not mean the end of the activities on board the Nansen. Trawling, collecting seawater and sediment samples, recording and analyzing data continue. Activities are carried out 24 hours a day, non-stop, in six-hour shifts.
The initial objectives of the project were to identify unexploited resources uh, on which uh, independent developing nations could build their fisheries on. But the project program objectives have been developing uh, with evolving uh, needs. Um, and today, more emphasis is being put to resources uh, within a broader ecosystem context. The next steps of the projects are probably its most vital and challenging ones. Charting the effects of um, climate change on marine resources and ecosystems will be fundamental if you want to help keeping the oceans healthy and uh, to continue to be an important source of food and livelihoods for millions of people and for future generations. What is now urgently required are more efficient research platforms, more scientists sharing their knowledge, and a closer interaction between science and management. As the research vessel Dr. Fridtjof Nansen sails on, it faces a new day with growing uncertainties. Depletion of resources is having an increasing impact. The cost of climate change is still unsure, but likely to be immense. The consequences will be lived tomorrow, and the Fridtjof Nansen is already working for tomorrow.